Hi there, viewers and gamers alike out there, and novelty people. Welcome back for more of a Winter's Daydream, available on the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One. So, let's continue our story in progress here, and we'll resume back from where we left off. Oh, not bad, huh? So, December 29th, Friday. Breakfast the next morning is an awkward affair. Otoko, who's sitting opposite me at the table, barely gives me a second glance. Her entire attention is directed at her miso soup with laser-like intensity. Really that upset I didn't agree to buy her a bikini? Why should I, anyway? Knowing Otoko's taste, the scanty strips of fabric tied together with flimsy strings that she covet covets would cost more than a meal capable of feeding... <coughs> Sorry, a whole family. Besides, I have no real desire to loiter around the women's swimsuit section any clothes stores. Especially not for the sake of my sister. I know Otoka wouldn't appreciate it, but I didn't go to Tokyo to buy my family gifts. I'm not a tourist. I live there now. It's my home. But this town used to be my home not so very long ago. Things really have changed during the last eight months. Though Otoko is trying her hardest to avoid me, there's something softly nostalgic about this scene. In fact, it's nostalgic precisely because she's avoiding it. I suppose Otoko's foul temper is, too, just a part of my daily life. My old life. We used to get on well enough when we were younger. We haven't for a few years now. I don't know why. I don't think I've ever done anything egregiously terrible to her, other than call her the wrong name from time to time. Make that most of the time. Still pondering, I fish a cube of tofu out of my miso soup and pop it between my teeth. It's smooth and silky and filled with gashi stock. It has a deeper, richer flavor than any tofu I've tasted. Mom watches me expectantly, a small smile on her face. Um, how is it? Really great, Mom! I return her smile with one of my own. Have you gotten even better at cooking? <laughs> well, maybe. That was the general idea, yes. <laughs> when did you become such a smooth talker, you? Being in the big city must have taught you a thing or two about flattering the, la about flattering the ladies. <laughs> or flattering the ladies there. <laughs> you is me. You is so you. <laughs> I knew I could make this feel like E10 because it is and higher Ugh. that's the most I've heard from Otoko during the past 20 minutes I swear being with her is like trying to squeeze blood from a stone but at least stones can't pull faces and call you gross not even the stones in the mythical land of Tokyo. What do I want another helping of miso soup? Um, yes, please. Pull out my bowl and mom takes it. Plus enough to the counter to fetch my top up. Um, well, I 
guess a little more can't hurt. Stop, stop being stupid. Cut it out. I glare at my little sister bitterly. She's being silent. Part of me wish she would say something, but now she's opened her mouth. I want nothing more for her to keep it shut. There are a handful of things in the world that should never be open, no matter what. The first is the sealed off entrance to Izanami's tomb. The second are the tubs of my grandmother's homemade natto sauce. The third is Otoko's mouth. My mom hands me my bowl of miso soup, now filled to the brim, and exchanges it for my half-finished bowl of brown rice. Thank you. She goes to the rice cooker, Ambling good naturally, she hums while she scoops more rice into my bowl, then returns it to me with a smile. Oh, um, thanks. I tried to sound enthusiastic, but my good mood has begun to wane. I poked at a cube of tofu in my miso soup. It bobs like a rubber duck in a bathtub. I know Toko's trying to get at me, and I don't want to give her the satisfaction of winning. But now it's impossible for me not to feel self-conscious. Have I really put on weight? Do I feel like I have a pizza belly? Because I really don't feel like I have a pizza belly. I don't think I look any different than I did eight months ago. But Otoko's forever pouring through fashion magazines and peering at her reflection in the mirror. She probably has a better eye for her looks than I do. I guess I have been eating out more than I used to. This would be expected, really. When there are so many restaurants and fast food places in Tokyo. And I live next to a McDonald's that's open 24-7. No, I'm not kidding. I live right next to a McDonald's 24-7, which is like... Peter Parker's apartment. Only it's in New York, but this one I live is in Tokyo. Scarfing lukewarm chicken nuggets at there in the morning while working on an essay due later that day is peak student living. Um, but I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, there's, there's Pokemon reference is here. <laughs> I'm not Pikachu, by the way. Is that such a bad thing? I mean, really? I always thought Pikachu was pretty cute. Okay, now you're going a... Okay, now you're going a little over the top. Oh, Toko! Kick upsets the table and my precariously full bowl of miso soup slashes all over the table and onto my lap. It's uncomfortably hot and I hiss beneath my breath. Otoko, <laughs> we're more careful! <laughs> You, you are so childish, you need to grow up! Why, you?! That's right, be nice to your sister. Woo, be nice to your sister! 
to your sister, you. Oh, look at me. I, I am innocent, but not my little, my, not my older brother who's always in trouble, so. <laughs> right. I grip my teeth together. Being the oldest sibling, I'm always the one who gets in trouble, no matter what Otoko does. Great! It's like I'm living right next to J. Jonah Jameson next door. But not really, though. My parents are soft on her. Dad always wanted a daughter, I think. So they let her get away with a lot. It doesn't hurt that she's so pretty and all. I want to stamp my feet on the floor and say that this isn't fair. But now doing that would really make me seem like a child. I have to try and bear it. But will I? All of a sudden I hit with a bright idea. You know what? I was thinking about visiting Grandma today. Why would I do a stupid little thing like that, you say? an outsider? Otoko's reaction might seem rude, but I think she has a valid point for once. You met Yumiko is our paternal grandmother, and our only grandparent who's still alive. She lives even further out in the sticks than we do, if you can imagine such a thing. Her house is situated in a village far littler than this town. A good 40 minutes away by train. The train chugs along an old, semi-abandoned track that's rusted and overgrown with weeds. There are no buildings for miles around. No streets, no houses, just flat, seemingly endless expanses of fields. I think about 300 people call my grandma's teeny, tiny village home. Surprised it hasn't been bulldozed over to make room for a highway yet. But maybe the planners and the local government don't even know how the village no, the village exists. It's so out of the way more birds live there than people building your nests in the holy roofs of all the abandoned houses. I used to hate our family visits to Grandma Yumeka when I was little, but now I'm starting to think that the peace and quiet of the countryside would be good for me. It'll certainly be more peaceful without a toko around. I'm being serious. I haven't seen Grandma in a while, and if I let this woman slip by, who knows when I'll get the chance. Well, that's because you didn't enjoy much out in the... Uh, uh, it's outside because you don't enjoy out much of the great outdoors. Well, you know how it is. She's getting on in years, and I want to see her set. Oh, want to see her if, well, just in case. You don't need to worry about your mother. She's a tough old bird. Tough as they come. <laughs> really are, though. I know, but it really has been a while. been to Tokyo a few times in her life? Then I'll go and call her right now. I'm not sure yet. It takes a while to get out there, and the trains and buses don't run very often. Why does Otoko sound so pleased about that prospect? If that happens, I'll change my name to Heidi and start rearing goats! Toko snorts and rolled her eyes and doesn't add any further comment. That is, if a mumbled freak under her breath counts as further comment. Okay, Mom, I will remember that! Thank you! Right. Your years wouldn't be the same without me. Very much indeed. We do it as a we do it all together. I know my mother's a great old woman to be around. She's always doting on you. But don't let her take up all your time. Alright? Don't worry. 
only be gone a day. Two days at most. I, I'm pretty sure of it. If not, it's gonna be three. And I'm Grandma's only grandson. I'm sure she misses me too. More than Otoko has, at any rate. My little sister is reclining in her chair, chopsticks in her mouth, idly pushing a piece of tofu from one end of her cheek to the other. When she sees me looking, she scowls and turns her head away. I thought little sisters were supposed to respect their older brothers. Why did I have to get stuck with Otoko? I phone my grandmother after breakfast. She sounds more than happy to accommodate me for a few days. At least, somebody is. Luckily, I don't have too much to pack, so I was tired after dinner last night and I didn't have the time to take all of my belongings out of my rucksack. I retrieve my bag from my bedroom and make my way downstairs. Tama is meandering about in the entrance hall by her shoes. She sniffs my sneakers curiously, her pink nose twitching, her head cooked, her head cooked, <laughs> cocked to one side. I'm sorry, I saw it and it was late. Maybe my scent has disturbed her. That's how I'm autistic. Thank you very much. Cats are incredibly territorial. It has been eight months since I last came back here. Do I smell unfamiliar to her now? Maybe she thinks I'm a stranger, a hostile invader. Well, Thomas never liked me anyway. Shoo! Shoo! Wave my hand in Thomas' direction, she hisses, scampering off down the hallway. The tail is stuck up in the air like an aerials, as it so often is. Stupid cat. I take a seat on the stairs and slide my shoes onto my feet. You could act a little nicer to me, you know. Oh? I glance upwards, meeting my sister's narrowed eyes. It's you. And why is that? Yes, yes, I'm overwhelmed with emotion that a goddess such as yourself deigned to materialize before a mere mortal like me. Quite literally, too. I didn't hear Otoko's footsteps as she approached me. Maybe she really did materialize out of thin air? Then again, it's more likely Otoko is so skinny her feet don't make any telltale noises as they touch the floor. Toko doesn't eat much. She picks at her food daintily, like a baby bird, and pushes things around in her bowl and on her plate, but not very much actually goes inside her mouth. Maybe she's trying to get that perfect bikini body at the end of December? <laughs> don't ask. Seriously, well, seriously, you guys, don't ask, okay? Whatever you do, don't ask me! Otoko might not be the nicest of young women, but you can't say she isn't dedicated. So why are you here? Are you going to beg me not to leave? Will you miss me after all? I should have known. You just came to give that to me so I won't starve? Oh, Togo throws something in my direction. It's a small lunchbox wrapped up cutely in a pink and white spotted handkerchief. The handkerchief is tied at the top of a neat ribbon, keeping the separate layers of the lunchbox held together. It's very, it's a very sweet, at least, it would be if Otoko weren't scowling. But it doesn't match my younger sister at all. What is she playing at? Are you really giving this to me? That's a stupid question, I guess. Oh, 
sorry, I just didn't expect this. A cutely packaged lunchbox is the very last thing I expect Otoko to hand me. Unless the contents are poisoned, of course. Younger sisters in TV shows are usually sweet and doting. They worry about their older brothers, fuss over their health, and make them delicious food. Like... Like Leifa does with Kirito. Only that is different. So... I'm gonna... But that is another sto That is another topic for another story, which I will not ask. It's a shame these young women only exist inside the TV screen. My little sister is the exact opposite of all that. That's why this situation is so surprising. By any chance, did you make this? Oh, right, of course. As if Otoko would ever cook for me. I'm not sure if Otoko can cook in the first place. Though a lot can change in eight months. And if she, and even if she could, she wouldn't waste her culinary prowess on me. She hates me. Well, thanks for giving it to me. I figured. Otoko shoves a lunchbox in my hand, scowling. She uses so much force, I almost dropped it. Harsh! Well, thanks, I guess? I rattle the lunchbox curiously with one hand. I don't know what's inside, but I can hear the sound of food sliding around, hidden from my prying eyes. Mom have made me for my journey. It'll be rice, no doubt. That's a standard rolled egg omelet, too. Maybe small hamburger steaks or fried chicken. Oh, I'm sorry. with that kind of sentence. You never seem to know when I'm with Otoko. That doesn't really matter though because she turns out, oh, turns about her heels and stalks off in a much the same manner Tama did earlier. If Otoko had a tail, I'm sure it would be sticking up in the air. I watch her from far sight. Thanks for your concern. I can always look at the bright side. I doubt my relationship with my lovely sister can get any worse. If you're already at rock bottom, there's no place you can go other than up, right? <laughs> my train journey is relatively unremarkable. It would be perfectly silent were it not for the rattling of the old train's wheels against the track. I'm one of the only people sitting in this old, juddering car. There's a woman with brown hair holding a bouquet of white lilies on her lap, and a man with a young... little... guy. His son, presumably, pressing against his shoulder. A stuffed bear clutched to his chest, but that's all. Otherwise, this carriage is utterly deserted. Just like the flat, featureless countryside that speeds past us. We stare aimlessly out of the windows, which are frosted over with powder snow icing. The rice fields and hedgerows are pure white. All the trees have been stripped of their leaves. The cold wind runs through them, making them shiver. The unused hand must sway precariously above my head. Why are there handrests on an old train like this? Nobody needs to stand. There are always free seats available. Not enough people live around here. There aren't any houses, just fields. The handrests seem like a useless expense, rocking pointlessly to and fro with the motions of the train. 
cold inside the train compartment, and my every exhalation of air mists up the windows. A young little man clutching the bear mumbles importantly in his sleep. A strand of drool drips slowly from the corner of his mouth, and his father wipes it away with a crumpled tissue. His tender, gentle gesture makes me think of my mother, and how she would baby me when I was that young little man's age. She still babies me, even now that I'm almost twenty. But it isn't really the same. I'm getting older, and nobody can stop the inevitable march of time. During the long journey, which lasts a good half hour longer than it has any right to, I eat my lunch. Mom did a wonderful job, just like usual. There's brown rice, as I expected. Mom favors brown rice over white. She says it has more flavor, accompanied with rolled egg omelets, cherry tomatoes, crispy fried chicken, and slices of apple. Mom used to make lunches like this for me back when I was in elementary school. If I ignored my reflection in the train's windows, I could almost fool myself into believing I'm a small child again. I closed the lid on my empty lunchbox and set it onto my lap. Pressing my fingers on the on the box, I turned my head and looked outside the window at the sugary snow clinging to each and every surface. I feel like I'm trapped inside a snow globe, the biggest snow globe ever to have been created. When the train finally pulls into the station, with an unpleasant screech of brakes and a flurry of powdered snow, I almost feel remorseful. I was enjoying my journey, and I wasn't the only one. The woman with Lily's jokes, eyes wide. I think she was starting to nod to her slightly crushed bouquet like some sort of talisman. The young little man with a stuffed bear jerks wide awake likewise. He glances about the almost empty train compartment in the abandoned train station His so eyes filled with tears. Then he starts to cry. I don't really blame him. I used to feel like crying whenever my parents took me to this tiny village too. It's so unkempt and run down it only inspires vague, uneasy feelings of depression. The dilapidated old train station. The station might be a bit generous when there's only one platform. Tempers one expectations for the village beyond it perfectly. It's a dull and desolate and almost entirely removed from the real world. All the same, I think I've gained a newfound appreciation for peace and quiet after living in Tokyo. It's relaxing, even if the young man, young little man's tears aren't. The little young man's dad leans over, attempting to console him, but I paid them little heed. I get to my feet, pulling my luggage out from the rack above my head. It's time to get going. My grandmother greets me cheerfully when I arrive at her home. She rattles off the, all the usual pleasantries while I take off my shoes at the entrance hall. How much she misses me, how much she is to see me, and how I'm welcome to stay with her for as long as I like. Once my shoes are removed and line up beside my grandmother's winter boots, she ushers me into the living room. It's not until we both seated beneath the kotatsu that here beneath warming our feet that she says the fateful line all grandmothers say to their grandchildren when they haven't seen them in a few months. That's, that's my grandmother Yumeko. It's as predictable as clockwork. I wonder if there's some kind of script that grandparents operate from or maybe an obscure law. As I ponder this, I look down at myself and frown. Have I really grown taller? To be quite honest, I can't see any difference. I think my grandmother is being a bit too optimistic. 
Either that, or she shrunk during the last few months, which isn't beyond the realms of possibility, actually. Strange things happen to our bodies as we get older. I think I look the same as always. I guess. I do shoot up like a bean sprout, I'll give you that. I think Mom said something like that yesterday, too. So my mother's name is Hisako. Nice. Yeah. Dad didn't seem to notice, though. So my father's name is Kaname, huh? <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow, Ed. Amen to that, you mecco. Right. Voice trails off. I'm not sure what to add to that. My grandmother's a strange woman. She likes teasing people, particularly my dad. And she jokes around so often it's hard to tell when, if ever, she's being serious. She reminds me a little a little of a fox, actually. She's easily as devious. I sometimes wonder how she managed to raise a straightforward man like my father. to cause you any trouble. Hmm. She has a point. Grandma Yumeko might be in her 80s, but she's as energetic as a woman half her age. Her spirit is very much alive, but her body betrays her years. Her fingers are long and skinny, her face ingrained in wrinkles, and her eyes would be horribly unfocused without the aid of her glasses. Despite all this, however, my grandmother pulls herself to a beat with a smile and train no weakness. For such an old woman, her tenacity is quite impressive, but I'm worried all the same. You don't need to make tea for me, I can always help. I push my palms against the surface of the old tots and ready to get to my feet, but... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I catch myself before I can make the same mistake twice, and my grandmother smiles fondly. Is that a good thing? To be honest, you do have a point. Even if my legal parents, Logan and Android 21 are, and my bio parents, Rosalina and the mysterious bio parent, who's soon to be named, but I'm not going to spoil it, but I know who it is. But. That's way till Paper Mario abridged! Right. I love green tea. Besides you, I also love green tea myself. Green is fine. I see. My grandmother pads out of the living room, her footsteps cushioned by her cream slippers. I begin to glance around in my grandmother's absence, letting the heat of the kotatsu suit my weary feet and aching legs. My grandmother's home is quint 
quintessentially Japanese. The walls are supported with wood, the floors made from tatami mats, and the doors are sliding screens. This kind of architecture feels almost rustic after my time spent in Tokyo. My apartment in Tokyo has a distinctly western feeling. There are no tatami floors, and there's not that much wood either. There are a lot of smooth, shiny plastic surfaces, however, and I sleep in a bed instead of a futon. This old house is as far away from my apartment as it's possible to get, and it looks the same as always. The same pictures hang on the walls, the same books line the shelves, and the same wooden fruit bowl rests atop the katatsu. Of the, of the, the only object in this room that eschews Japanese sensibilities is a French doll sitting on a small table by a bookcase. The doll has blonde hair tied back in neat ringlets, blue eyes fringed with long lashes, and small, pouty lips. She wears a dress made of silk, real silk, I think with matching shoes and socks. I think her name is Lisette. My grandparents bought Lisette when they went on holiday to Europe more than 50 years ago. She's been a permanent fixture of this house ever since, even if she's a tad out of place. When she was younger, Otoko used to examine Lisette, brushing out her hair and unbuttoning and rebuttoning her dinky little shoes. I played with, I played with Lisette too. Great! I'm playing with... <laughs> Don't ask what I played in real life because you'll find it <laughs> weird. <laughs> so seriously, don't ask. Though not quite as delicately as my sister. <laughs> I used to tip the poor doll upside down and treat to see what sort of underwear she had on. Plain white drawers if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> this is so unlike me. <laughs> it wasn't a particularly exciting sight. Visiting my grandparents was never exciting. <laughs> this old house reminds me of my childhood. Of long, seemingly endless summer days where I would lounge about in the shade, trying to keep both the heat and my own boredom at bay. It never worked. Sometimes... My parents and my grandparents and Otoko and I would eat slices of watermelon sitting on the wood in the veranda outside. The watermelon has grown locally, its firm green skin concealing an inviting pale pink interior studded with little black seeds. We used to sprinkle salt on our slices of watermelon to draw out the flavor. It's a trick Dad taught me. I was kind of awesome, I guess. But the warm summer air thronged with intrusive insects. They buzzed and bit and sucked my blood, leaving me with little red wheels all over my arms and legs. <laughs> Fortunately, it's too cold for insects right now. My grandma <clears throat> My grandmother's home is the same as it was during those long, lazy summer days. But now the windows are glazed with ice and the kotatsu is the focal point of this living room. The kotatsu and the oranges. The pictures on the walls. The set on her desk. And opposite the boxy television set. Ah, a single syllable falls from my lips. I was wrong. There's something different about this room after all. A small shrine has been erected on a stand in the corner. A photograph of my grandfather in the center. A few candles around the edges. My grandfather died a little over a year ago, before I went to university. I haven't seen my grandmother since the funeral. I haven't been to her home. I've never seen this shrine. I swallow. I never used to like visiting my grandparents. I knew there were nice people. They always gave me spending money on my birthday and New Year's, but I was too young to appreciate their company. My grand then my grandfather died. He died and I 
wasn't that upset because I didn't really know him, but that upset me more than his passing did. I didn't know him. How was that possible? I had plenty of opportunities to talk to him during my childhood, but I never took advantage of them. Instead, I spent my time at my grandparents' home lounging around like a mal malcontent cat, reading and rereading volumes of the young little man's manga I brought with me to stave off the inevitable boredom. Maybe that's the real reason why I decided to see my grandmother today. Toko contributed to my decision, but this is something that's weighed on me for a while. Guilt. I don't want my grandmother to die like my grandfather, as a mysterious, benevolent entity who existed as nothing more than a shadow in the periphery of my life. I want to get to, I want to, get to know her a little bit better, not as an estranged family member, but as a human being, she deserves it. She's always been so nice to me, after all. Her and my grandfather. And I do believe we are going to stop here for the time being. And don't you worry, we are going to continue to pick up from where we left off for another time. Tell me, what do you guys think of this? Novel, uh, novelty game right here a winter's daydream do you like it or hate it mash that like button or share this video if you guys love this novelty game lo love novelty games such as myself because I have more than one <laughs> so anyways this is Leo Wolverine saying and speaking as always as your friendly neighborhood spider cop and not to mention your master chief who takes chances making mistakes and getting messy and celebrating Autism Awareness Month for the entire month of April wearing the colors red, yellow, and blue. Godspeed, play safe, and shalom. Remember to fight with honor, love, truth, and justice and see you guys next time for more of a Winter's Daydream that is available only on the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One. See you guys next time.